Alrighty then, welcome back to this van conversion. Today we're carrying on with the hydronic heating system and the next step is we have to drop the fuel tank that's underneath the van. We have to drop it and connect the auxiliary fuel line to the tank and then to our heater. But one kink in the gears is that uh, we need to go somewhere flat to do so and our driver here is definitely not flat and we also need more um, like leg space and um, uh, sort of just space around the van because uh, when you drop the tank you have to put it on the side and we don't have enough space here so uh, we're going somewhere else uh, to get that done so yeah let's let's go okay so we are on site we have been gathering tools there's uh, quite a bit of cardboard yeah that's to hold the fuel tank we've got our jack to lift the front up a little bit tool kit to undo all the bolts Oh, and we have the pig ready. Oh, ready for duty. And happy about it. It's the most comfortable head support we have been able to find. Thank you, mate. So, first things first, we need to disconnect the battery since we're working with fuel. And we need to jack the van up a little so that when we disconnect the fuel tank, we can actually get it out from under the van. But before that, before you do any work on fuel tank, you need a fire extinguisher just in case. So we're just going to take off the negative of the battery, just in case there's any sparks, we don't short anything out or, you know, ignite fuel. Next of all, we need to jack just the area, so this front wheel up. So the jack says that came with the van, we need to do it just in front of the tire. In front of the tire, huh? So this is the first front cross member. And see this little bracket here in front of the wheel so there's the wheel and it's in front of the wheel i think that's where we're meant to jack it up All right, just get more of a flat surface and then put a piece of uh tile down so the jack has something flat to sit on this is the jack that came with the van all right we're on okay so now that we've jacked it up just a little bit so it's easier for the fuel tank to actually drop out now we can start removing the fuel tank. So first off, we're gonna to have to remove this contraption here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then there's a bolt behind. There we go. And then there's one more bolt holding the fuel filler cap to the actual van. There we go. So that is now loose and can come out. Right, with that out of the way, we can go under the van now. These are the boxes that we have prepared to catch the fuel tank when it drops. There, there you go. Yeah. Thank you, Hannah and Myron, for the tip about the boxes. So the fuel tank, which is this thing here, is held in by two straps. One here at the back, and then one here at the front. So basically when we take those brackets off, the fuel tank will drop. But there's a few things you want to do before that. Just one. To is empty your tank as much as possible. Yes, so we're on about an eighth of a tank and we think the tank's about 15 kilos empty as well. So the lighter you can make it, the easier your job will be. Second, this is the fuel tank and then the bit that we undid on the door connects to this. So this is the fuel filler neck here and it goes up to the top. Now there's a wire in here and this rubber cap which you want to remove and disconnect before you try and drop the tank. Otherwise these will catch and probably break. So that's what you want to look for and you can disconnect that by just pulling it apart and remember to connect this back up at the end. Right, so with that out of the way, the final thing you want to do before dropping the fuel tank and removing these brackets is that you want to take the fuel lines and the electrical connection off the top of the tank since you can actually reach them right now. So let me take you further in. <laughs> so. Here we are at the front of the tank. This here, this black thing is the fuel filter that you can see. And we need to be disconnecting some of these. So this is the electrical connection going to the fuel tank. So you want to disconnect that. Just dealing with my issues with claustrophobia, that's all. Just not moving. Come on. There you go. Mm -hmm. So that's that one disconnected. And now we need to disconnect the fuel lines. Now that being said, Ow. There's one of them. That one there. That's okay. one of the disconnection points. Aren't you supposed to disconnect them once it's half dropped? 
Actually, yeah, we're gonna have to disconnect them when the fuel tank's dropped, because they can't reach that. These fuel tank bolts are not usual bolts, you'll be glad to know. What counts as a usual bolt? Six-sided. These are like 12-sided, like the reverse of Torx. Great. So you're just gonna have to use a 12 mil socket if you don't have that special tool. There's the second one. Right. All right, so we'll put the box under this side and then go and undo the back straps. That's the fourth bolt. So if I'm holding the tank here, yeah. you've got to keep an eye on those fuel lines to make sure we don't bend them. Right, so you're saying the two fuel lines that you were trying to disconnect from the front over there, yeah. you can disconnect from here. Yeah. Right, so that's the electrical connection. So there's an electrical connection there. Yeah. There Whoa. Go. That one's that off. And then these are the two fuel lines which we need to get off. So these are the fuel lines we need to disconnect. Now there's a button here and one on the other side, so you need to push both in and then pull it off. Come on. There you go. It's out. That's out. There you go. That smells like white spirit. Well, it's diesel. Well, <laughs> is it white spirit? <laughs> no. Uh -huh. Oh, no. With that all disconnected, uh -huh. what we need to do is support the tank here and remove this box, and then this end will tip all the way down, so like zigzag it down. The only thing that might catch is this. So if you go up from the top, make sure it's not catching. Come over here. All right. There you go. Can you go down? Yeah, there we go, it's on the floor. Okay. Box out the way. Okay. There you go, the fuel tank's on the floor. Right, now how, how do we get it out? That's still up here. Yep, so we bend, yep. So we need to bend this fuel filler cap down, lever it, and then pull it out. There we go. Right. There you go. There's a bit of diesel, maybe we can clean that. Yep, that's one fuel tank. Yeah. That's a really awkward shape. <laughs> So we're going to clean all the dirt off before we open the lid because we don't want any of the dirt falling into the tank because then it's going to be very difficult to get out. So next thing we need to do is take... Oh, oh, falling, falling, cameraman this. falling. Next thing we need to do is take this off. Now it's got a twist cap, this black piece of plastic on the outside. It's very tough to get off. So the best way that I've seen people use is a clamp. Clamp that one very tight. Broke. And you broke the lid. A little bit of it. Yep. Uh, right, hammer. Hammer? I'm living with the caveman! He's got a screwdriver. Another one? Yep. This plastic is really rubbish. Right. Ready? Yeah. Oh, put that. There we go. Slow. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, that should come off. Hey, it will spring up. There you go. Okay. Rope to the rescue. Yeah, we tried hitting it with a hammer. We tried a clamp. We tried WD-40, tried boiling water, we tried rubber gloves, we tried an old rag, none of those worked. And we've broken a fair few of the fins off the actual uh, cap. But a piece of rope where it will grip all the way around and then tug it, yeah. and that should get it off. Although you do need quite a few people. Yeah. Three what? people. <laughs> One to pull the rope and two to hold the tank. Anyway, the important thing is, this is off. Do you want to be careful when you pull this out of this, which is the float, that measures how much fuel is left in your tank. Mm -hmm. You don't want to snag that, otherwise you're going to break it. Right, are we putting it over there? Yep, yeah. let me just pour the fuel out. 
And since we've taken this off, we want to put something over that so we don't get dust and leaves blowing around whilst we're working on that. Actually, let's put some weight on that. There you go. Okay. Right. This is the contraption that's inside the fuel tank. These are the fuel inlet and outlet that were connected up. That's the electrical connection. And then this is the auxiliary fuel line that we're going to tap into. We can attach a fuel, on, uh, fuel line onto there. And then on the underneath, there's this yellow nipple here, which will attach another fuel line and that will go down into the fuel tank. So we want our fuel line to come from that nipple all the way down to just a few centimeters off the bottom because we don't want it touching the bottom of the tank. So this height is about 27 centimeters. However, when we pulled it out the tank, this actually compresses a few centimeters. So it compresses a bit like that. So the actual height when it's in the tank is about yeah, 24. So if we cut it at 22 centimeters, that means when it's compressed in the tank, it won't touch the bottom. This is quarter inch or six mil fuel line. I just find it fascinating that they, they use the inch first, even though you don't use it. That's because the nipple is uh, a quarter inch. So poke that end up into there. And we put that end on like that. So the next section, now that we've got that bottom pipe on, just there, we need to actually drill out this top bit because if I grab this, don't worry, I've washed it and my hands. I can't actually blow air. So this is actually blocked off from the factory. So we just need to drill a little way in. But as you can see, if we drill too far, we're just gonna drill through the back of the plastic. We want the drill bit to come in about halfway in this rounded bit here at the back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'll put a piece of tape on the drill and that way we'll know how far we need to drill in. So this is a four mil drill bit. We'll just go very slowly and make sure you have this tube on the outside so any plastic goes straight down this tube. You don't want it going in there. There you go. Yeah, that went. There you go, so that's the plastic. Is that plastic or yep. it's a bit shiny? It's probably covered in fuel a bit. There you go, air's coming out. Cool, so the next thing to do is attach something onto the outside nipple. So we've got 3 8 inch fuel pipe on one side and then on the other side, there's a two mil connection for our blue fuel line. So this stuff. And this is what's gonna actually connect to the heater. By the way, just in case any of you are, are, are watching this uh, and you haven't watched our previous hydronic heating uh, videos, the reason we're installing an uh, auxiliary fuel line is so we can connect our diesel hydronic heater to the fuel tank. And uh, some of you might, might remember that we were discussing whether to do an individual fuel tank or to connect two the big fuel tank as we're doing now. The long and the short of it is, is the first we couldn't really find uh, an appropriate place to put our, our red tank. We had certain concerns with uh, uh, leakages if we were to put it inside underneath the seats. And then when we thought to put it uh, uh, in the bonnet, then we had concerns with uh, uh, heat venting and then getting poisoned. Then we could have gone with a separate tank externally, but not the red one because we couldn't mount that underneath. But those were really, really expensive. And we needed to find ones with the appropriate venting caps. And basically, this was the easiest option at the end of the day. Uh, so all the research. So everybody who suggested it to us, you were right. And with that, Sam is, I think, done struggling with that, that hole. Let's go struggle with another one. So I've got the blue fuel line connected on this side and hose clamped it down. Now we need to connect this onto here. This apparently should fit. There you go. All right, so that's clamped on. Excellent. Now we just have to reassemble our fuel contraption. So there's a, a uh, O-ring that actually goes on here. So it should have stayed on when you took it off. Just need to make sure that it lines back up. So we've got the O-ring in place. And now we just gently put this Back in. Back on. Finally, nope. with um, no drama behind the story there. Nope. The only thing you've got to bear in mind is that these were facing that way when we took it off, so they have to face that way when we put it back on. And make sure you don't twist the yellow. Only twist the black thing because there's a float on the yellow thing, and it can come off if you try and twist the yellow thing. Don't ask how we know that. Anyway, 
Just need to put it back under the van now. Should we put the fuel lines on now, if we they can, reach? Yes, let's put the fuel lines on now whilst they're easier to reach. There you go. And then the other connection was the uh, electrical wires. There you go. There you go. That's up. Oh, more on stones. Mm. Oh, in wrong places. Now we need to get it back up so we can bolt it to the well, van. Get that end up. This so end up with the small box and yeah. then that end up with the big box. in and we're gonna Cheers. have lunch you know it's suddenly turned summer here in the UK it's like what 25 degrees at the moment I think it's worth just sitting outside and absorbing it whilst it's here so we just need to connect that blue fuel line to the heater after we eat anyway So, just going to double check that the uh, engine starts. We've connected everything back together. So just turning the ignition on a few times to prime the fuel lines since we emptied them a bit. Right, in neutral. Let's see if it starts. Uh, doesn't sound like it's starting to me. Is the fuel gauge uh, running? No. Let's go back under the van and double check all the lines are connected. I know why the uh, the we connected the electrical connection on top of the tank, but we didn't connect it up. Remember, by the fuel filter. Oh. There's a connection there. Hope that that sends information about the fuel gauge as well. Let's see. There you go. Yes. Right in neutral. Let's see if it'll work now. Please refuel. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. Please refuel. <laughs> oh. So we don't have to take the fuel tank down again. Okay, that's good. That's good. 40 miles. <sighs> Clock's wrong. And that's fine. But that's just because we disconnected the battery. Okay, so All right. now that we know that that works and the van still works and we can move it tonight. The next thing that we need to do is connect that blue fuel line that we had to the actual furnace and in between it we need to put, fit our fuel filter and our fuel pump. So that's our fuel filter, that's the one for the furnace and then that's the fuel pump and that has a little electrical wire that we need to connect as well. We need a piece of rubber tubing before and after the fuel filter and the fuel pump like that. Well, let's uh, pop the clamps on them. You yeah. can even connect them here before we go under. Yeah. So these little pieces of rubber and all the Jubilee clamps that, uh, that came with them all came in the kit that we bought. So we didn't have to buy them separately. But even so, you should check that if... you have enough rubber pieces. Yeah. And then the final piece will go on the actual furnace itself. So yeah, I right. guess we need to head under the van. Yeah, this is for this, so we must take it down as well. Well, actually, we can just put that on. There we go. Cool. Okay, so yeah, we can go under the van now. Cool. Let's go. Grab that. So, we've got our blue fuel line there, and this fuel line needs to connect to the fuel port in our furnace up there. So we've got it coming out over the drive shaft. Now we need to fit the fuel pump and the fuel filter onto something before it gets to the furnace. So we could put something up here. How close to each other do they have to be? Um, they have to be at least 50 centimeters apart. So we could put the fuel filter here mm -hmm. and then the fuel pump like somewhere over here. Yeah, I think you'll put, 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 put it on here. So like, mm. 
um, when you put it on here and then you let it dangle down, sort of like that. Yeah. My only concern with that is, is it's quite near the exhaust, both this one and the furnace one. Well, then that leaves us uh, to go with that column somewhere. We could go in here, because let me pass this fuel line where it should go, because we're going to have this fuel line go... like this. So if it's attached to this piece here, there we go. So we can bend this wherever we like. It doesn't matter too much how long it is. So yeah. Well, we, it does, you don't want it to sag. Yeah. But we could do like that. We could bend it round like that, put the fuel pump here, and then just do that short bit up to there. Pig. Pig. We forgot the pig. Again. Oh. Okay. So yeah, this piece of metal here. So yeah, I have the fuel line going over there. I'm touch the fuel field here. This is just the handbrake cable. That's no bother. And as long as we keep it away from this, which spins, that'll be fine. So we're going to use these tiny four mil P clips that will clamp around the actual blue fuel line itself. And then we can, you know, attach this to the van. So we got the fuel line going from the fuel tank there over the drive shaft. Then we got it going there to the fuel pump, which is now the right way. <laughs> then we got it going over the heat shield. And there's the exhaust. So it comes out over the heat shield clip it on there and then we're going to put the fuel pump on this beam. Now with our one we need to put it at an angle between 15 and 35 degrees with the outlet, the way that the fuel is traveling, which is that way, being higher than where the fuel enters. Yeah. So we were thinking putting it like that. Yeah, dangling off the beam. Yep. So there's no exhaust and it can't rattle against anything since it's going to dangle like that. So, we just need to drill a hole and bolt that in there. Alrighty, so there we go. We've got the fuel line running from the fuel tank through the fuel pump. Then it goes around that heat shield or over the top. It comes out over there. So that's coming in from the heat shield into the fuel pump. And then from the fuel pump it goes up and around, all the way around there, and into the heater. I would say that's enough for today. What happened today was <laughs> uh, we dropped the tank, that's connected, the van does start. The fuel gauge works and we have connected the um, fuel line to the heater itself. And beyond that, to get the heater to work, we need to connect the wires. Oh, I don't know whether <laughs> I can lie down under the van again. Well, uh. hopefully we won't need to. Actually, actually, we will need to for the cable. I'm assuming we haven't gotten that out. The, the cable to the fuel pump. Oh, no, I'll go, and, I, I'll, I'll go and do that. Just plug that in. Now we're done. So I think one more video on the installation of the hydronic heating system, uh, uh, at which point we should hopefully be able to turn it on. And that will be the wiring and the final glyco tank connection as well. After that's done, I hope I don't see anything else that has to be done. Please. At least on the glyco system, huh? Okay, so um, see you next week.